There's a place where a fantasy is relived once every turn around the sun. Renewing hopes, dreams, and memories. There's the ball game. That's it, it's all over. The biggest upset in the history of Little League. Hit deep from Frazier to left. He's got it again. Of proud moments and history made. It's been an incredible journey. We're one of the best teams in the world. It's over. Complete game for Monet Davis. It's always a year in the making, and always worth the wait. Rips one to left, and that one is gone! The Little League World Series starts now. You're watching the Little League World Series Southeast Regional. The wait is over, it is time to play ball. Taylor, South Carolina. And Northwood Little League set to take on Goodlettsville, Tennessee in the Goodlettsville Little League Club. This Southeast Regional, one of eight around the country, eight teams competing here over the next week before we crown a champion and send them off to Williamsport, South Carolina, and Tennessee, two of the most successful states here over the past decade. Welcome inside the booth, everybody. We are thrilled you are here. Drew Felios alongside Mike Lavalier. Mike, our fifth year involved, and it does not get much better or much bigger than this. Well, I tell you what, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Unbridled joy out there. These guys put on an absolutely great show for us. Today in our first game, Tennessee, probably one of the pre-tournament favorites due to the history. We've also got South Carolina, and South Carolina just with one returning player. Cooper Noble is thrilled to be back here in Warner Robins. Well, yeah, Cooper Noble is their number two hitter. He's their shortstop, and I tell you one thing, they are going to have to rely on his experience. He's the only returner from last year. And for Tennessee, on the mound, Corbin Crosby, kind of a really happy-go-lucky kid, but he bats fourth in the lineup. He makes great contact, a great hitter for average, but really, easy-going dude out there. Both Little Leagues making their fifth appearance here at the Southeast Regional. South Carolina, one and two here a season ago. It's South Carolina and Tennessee. First pitch is next.
ready to rock and roll here in Warner Robins. Taylor, South Carolina battling Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Southeast Regional about to get underway. Corbin Crosby out on the bump for Tennessee and getting loose. And Mike, this is a good looking lefty. Tennessee is starting here in this opening matchup. Yeah, we mentioned uh, him in the open. And uh, Corbin's a big guy out there, long, lanky left hander. Good fastball in the upper 60s, uh, 67, 68, maybe. Maybe pumped up, uh, might touch 70. Uh, outstanding curveball, but uh, you know it's all about his uh, attitude out there. Really, he competes. He can, he can, yeah, he competes really well, and uh, he's just a guy that uh, you know you look for him to, you look for him to just go out there and just give it his all, and you know really no emotions. Sorry, that was on me. So, South Carolina. There's the lineup for South Carolina. As Gavin Weidman leads it off, Cooper Noble hits second, Bryant third, Sifri the cleanup, Grabiak, Myers, Irizarry, Smouse, and Lopez rounding out the order for Northwood Little League. So South Carolina, fifth appearance in the Southeast Regional, second straight back here after going one and two last season. And Weidman, looks like he was hit on the wrist that time, wants to take his base, and he'll trot down to first. So first pitch, and a base runner already here in Warner Robins. Well, auspicious start for Tennessee. One pitch, uh, already got a base runner, just barely nicked him off the, looked like a little bit off the wrist. Really enjoyed speaking with all the coaches and Joey Hale mentioning about our pitcher Corbin Crosby. Uh, nothing bothers him. Well, we're, we're going to find out right now early. Weidman down to second. Hut Hargrove behind the plate for Tennessee. Cooper Noble watches one. Cooper using that experience from a season ago. Father Mike Noble, third base coach for South Carolina. And already, visit to the mound. Joey Hale wants to pay a quick visit. You know, jitter sometimes a factor here in these regionals, but Tennessee do not expect them to be out of their element because they have been here and done that before. Yeah, Joey Hale uh, managed here uh, in years past, and he knows what's going on. And, you know, this right now is just basically going out there and saying, young man, you know, just kind of remember, this is a game. You know, give it your best. Relax as much as you can. But, you know, it just it's an elevated game of catch between the pitcher and the catcher. A lot easier said than done. Two balls now The count to Cooper Noble. Just underway here. First game of four today from the Southeast Regional. And it's three balls and no strikes. That misses on the outside part of the plate. So first and second now, nobody out. And a bit of a shaky start for Corbin Crosby. Greg Bryant now hitting in the three hole. Is this one high and inside? Brian is the ace on the mound for South Carolina. Chance to really help his team here in the first inning offensively, fouling one back. South Carolina last year beating Florida in the opening round game, but then losing to Alabama three to two and then to West Virginia. 
was a year that Coach Mike Noble said our bats just went cold. We had all the talent, everything we thought was in place, just did not swing the bat very well. It happens this time of year. And it's oftentimes the team that advances, the team that gets hot at the right time. It's not always the very best team. Inside part of the play. And again, a ball four. Bases are loaded here with nobody out. Well, two things happening here against Tennessee is, number one, you've got the bases loaded and facing the cleanup hitter and nobody out. But more importantly, you know, that pitch count gets up, and that's something that plays a huge role in the evolution of this tournament. Pitch counts are incredibly important to manage those and if you're throwing a ton of pitches in the first very good chance you won't be there at the end Dawson Siffrey watches a strike Crosby trying to battle his way out of a jam here and the count now one ball two strikes Corbin Crosby having a little trouble with the fastball, trying some breaking balls, see if he can get in some kind of rhythm. You know, one thing about Crosby, don't blink. You're going to miss a pitch. He's up on the mound ready to fire. Two and two. Got him swinging. First strikeout of the game for Corbin Crosby, and he needed that out, Mike, big time. I tell you, you've said it better than I ever could right there, Drew. That's a perfect pitch, pitcher's pitch, down and away, a little tail on that fastball. Great location. Hit right back up the middle, and it's into center field for a base hit. One run scores. Here comes the second, South Carolina on top, 2-0. Nolan Graviak coming through. Now the ebbs and flows of these ball games are sometimes just absolutely drastic and dramatic. Here you see Tennessee thinking, all right, they're one pitch away. They do get the ground ball, but this one finds a hole and just good aggressive base running by South Carolina, and that's huge for them. After a punch out of your number four guy, to have your number five get up there and two run base hit, that's huge. Lane Myers turned now in the six hole. Two strikes against Lane here. Oh, nice pitch that time. A little bit of a change up outside part of the plate, and there's two down. Yeah, after a shaky start, it, Crosby does make a nice pitch here. Couple of punch outs. Looks like he's got that little tailing fastball away to the right handers. Location was huge right there. In this day and age of all the places where you can work out, these guys see enough velocity where velocity doesn't really crush it like it used to in years past. These kids see it all the time. Now it's more or less about mixing pitches and hitting your spots. Joel Irizarry now for South Carolina with two down. Irizarry puts it in play right at the second baseman, and he takes care of it. Jacob Murphy making the play for Tennessee. South Carolina getting two. Here in the first, Tennessee, coming up when we come back.
Good start for South Carolina here at the Little League Southeast Regional. First game of four today on ESPN+. Plus. Greg Bryant getting the ball for South Carolina, and they've got just who they want starting this tournament. Yeah, Greg Bryant's a three-pitch pitcher. Three quality pitches, his fastball. Nothing that's going to light up the radar gun. He's going to be in the lower 60s. But an outstanding curveball, outstanding changeup, and he can throw all three pitches at any time. Take a look at this starting lineup for Tennessee. Nathan Taylor will lead it off. Champ Nix hitting in the two hole. Hut Hargrove third. Crosby Story with Phil Pot in the six hole. Kennedy Murphy and McCandless at the bottom of the order for Tennessee. You can tell Tennessee a little bit shocked the way that game started. Now let's see if Nathan Taylor can get on to start this game. Kind of waves at one, and it'll be strike one. Well, interesting uh, right off the get-go. Starts with an off-speed pitch, a little curveball to start the game off. Nathan Taylor looking for fastball, and uh, that was an excuse me swing. I didn't really mean to. Nathan Taylor. Tennessee's version of Ricky Henderson. Lead off hitter, Mike, but hits with power and probably one of their best all around hitters. Outstanding uh, in this day and age of where strikeouts are okay. <laughs> He's had one strikeout thus far in tournament play. Three balls, one strike now. Taylor is aboard with a walk. So Champ Nix now coming up for Tennessee. Champ, of course, the nickname of Tanner Nix. Listed as Champ, though, in the official program here in Warner Robins. Big swing and a miss there. A yeah, good curveball from Gregory Bryant. There's a guy that his off-speed pitches really set up his fastball. Side. That misses two balls and two strikes here in the first inning. Waving at one and the first strikeout for Greg Bryant. First base is occupied, so he is automatically out, even though the catcher did not squeeze it. Yeah, that was a you know nice two-two pitch. Uh, the previous pitch was a high breaking ball. That one much much better. Came out of the hand looking like a strike. Champ could not hold back. Nathan Taylor had the chance to advance if he wanted to, but nice block by Nolan Grabiak. Playing both sides of the ball. Big hit early. Hargrove puts it in play for Tennessee. They get one. The sure out at first. Nicely done by Aaron Lopez. And there's two down. The defense for South Carolina. Brady Smouse, Gavin Weidman. And Joel Irisari in right field. Myers, the third baseman. Noble starts it short with Aaron Lopez at second. Sifri, the first baseman. And Grabiak behind the plate. Oh. 
Corbin Crosby now. At the dish for Tennessee. It's a chance for young man to get his team right back in it. A little rough start on the mound, but one swing of the bat and we get a tie ball game. He's certainly got the power to do it. Shot into left field. That's going to be a base hit. Runner will stay at third base. Looked like he thought about it. But eventually, Taylor puts on the brakes. Nicely done by Corbin Crosby here with two outs. Well, with two outs, generally, you'd, as a third base coach being aggressive, you'd like to try to score that run. But I think Joey Hale made an outstanding call right there. It was a one hopper right to Brady Smouse in left field. I don't think there was any chance for Nathan to score. Watson Story swinging it now for Tennessee. Watson, the tallest player for Tennessee, six feet tall and only 12 years old. Favorite actor, Chris Farley. And one of the things that Bryant needs to be uh, effective with is doing exactly what he did right there, uh, pitching backwards, uh, throwing the breaking ball in a fastball count. One ball, two strikes now. Runners on the corner for Tennessee. Greg Bryant trying to battle out of it for South Carolina. And call timeout here on the field. Joey Hale, manager for Tennessee, is going to have a word with Watson Story. Joey, a firefighter and EMT, experienced coach, coming here to Warner Robins, just lives Little League Baseball absolutely loves it, Mike. So passionate. Yeah, I tell you, that I have to give them uh, most intense. Uh, when we were having our interviews yesterday with the coaches, and they were, uh, that's invaluable to us. They're sharing about the kids and their journeys. But, uh, yeah, Joey Hale, yeah, there, there's, uh, <laughs> that was the intensest uh, interview I think I've ever had. Struck him out. Tremendous pitch by Greg Bryant, and South Carolina gets to the dugout without any damage done in the first. We've played one. It's 2-0 South Carolina. Little League Southeast Regional underway from Warner Robins, Georgia. South Carolina with a 2-0 lead over Tennessee. First of four games today on this first game and first day of competition. And the key, Mike, always get off to a good start because this regional is a marathon. You do not want to be two and done because you can get into trouble really quickly. Yeah, going through the loser's bracket, it's, you know, obviously very difficult and, you know, there's really no tomorrow. You know, after you lose that first one, the second one, then you go pack your bags. And, you know, this is such a, a wonderful place. You know, Warner Robins, Georgia, and Southeast Little League Field. And, 
you know, all the kids want to be here for the entire week, but we're going to end up with one champion. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the teams, uh, you know, they come and they go, and, you know, hopefully they soak in this great experience. Brady Smouse also for South Carolina, now swinging it. See Hargrove behind the plate. Of course, with the pitch counts the way they are, Mike, and this being the long marathon to, to be crowned champion, if you are a manager, do you, is it just customary, you start this tournament with your best guy throwing on day one, or do you tend to save him a little bit more throughout? Hargrove down on strikes. Well, that, to tell you the truth, Drew, it's, it's, that's about knowing your team. Uh, I know that there's a couple of coaches that weren't sure exactly what they were going to do today. There's rule, of, you know, kind of a, you know, a, a thought process where, you know, do you waste your, or not maybe not waste, or do you pitch your best guy against, you know, a, a, a very good team? And I know, you know, that's a couple of the coaches were thinking about that where, you know, they feel that they're maybe behind the eight ball with just the draw and they may pitch their number two or number three guy and save that that uh, their best. Um, I'm not big on saving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, you know something that you know these guys get you there, and you got to count on them to win. Big swing by Lopez, and we'll keep an eye on the pitch count for Crosby right now. Already at 31 here at the start of the second inning. Breakdown right there. Split in half with balls and strikes. Big swing by Lopez for strike three. We saw the eligibility there quickly. And there you see, if you go over or under 20 pitches, you can pitch the next day. Then over 20 pitches, that's whenever rest is needed. 66 plus, Mike, four days rest. Yeah, it basically takes you out of the tournament. Uh, you pitch the first day, uh, you know, maybe if you get to the finals. Uh, but 85 is the, the limit. Uh, you cannot start another hitter after 85 pitches. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's uh, something that all these coaches, uh, you know, you're just not putting players out there. There's a lot of strategy to it. Hit hard to the second baseman, Jacob Murphy. Makes an easy play for Tennessee. A 1-2-3 inning, no damage done. South Carolina leading 2-0 to the bottom of the second we go. Three games coming up later on today. Virginia, North Carolina, Alabama, and Florida at 4 o'clock. 7 o'clock, Georgia and West Virginia scheduled here from Warner Robins. Bottom of the second now for Tennessee and our first pinch hitter of the game, Ty Fry, checks into the game. So an interesting move here by 
Joey Hale as he immediately subs in that six hole spot for Cade Philpott. All of our teams uh, here but one have 13 players. There's mandatory play involved. With you have 12 or more, you have to make sure that each of your reserves have one at bat. The one team, Alabama, has 10, so their reserve has to play six consecutive outs in the field and get one at bat. Strike that time by Bryant. Interesting part about um, about our pinch hitter here. Wood bat, Drew. That's one of the few that you will see. Yeah, you don't you don't see very often. You see kids that train with wood bats. Ty Fry uses one, and he's got enough power where he can get the ball out of the ballpark with this wood bat. Fry watches it high and outside. Three balls, two strikes. Very crafty. Lefty is Fry. He'll put it in play to the second baseman, Lopez, once again. And it's out of the hands of Cipri. Fry will stay at first base. Tennessee with a base runner here off the air. See a lot of games determined throughout this week. Have some balls that are hit that you think there would be automatic outs. But you have to understand these are young players, 12, 11 years old. They do make mistakes. It's all about learning from them. And as a team, whenever you're offered that gift, to try to take advantage of it. Jackson Kennedy now for Tennessee. It looked like on that play, Mike Dawson Siffrey, the first baseman, tried to stretch out when he didn't really need to. Yeah, it just stretched out just a little bit too far. Jackson Kennedy's got one of the best nicknames, I think, of this tournament. They call him the mayor. <laughs> it's because of his very engaging personality. So likable. Can talk it up with the best of them. Yeah, it's it's fun whenever, you know, when we have our interviews yesterday <laughs> with the coaches and you know, the expressions and, you know, the, the inner stories that some we can share, some we can't. <laughs> and then for a strike, Kennedy watches it. And that's a big-time pitch by Greg Bryant. He just snuck that ball right by him. Take a peek here and looking for the breaking ball is the fastball. Catcher wanted it up a little bit higher. Gets the call anyway. Brings up Jacob Murphy now. <laughs> Jacob Murphy, the youngest player for Tennessee at 11 years old. See Joey Hale over talking while this is going on, there's a question whether Murphy was in the lineup. He was in my lineup, Drew. <laughs> it's, it's all legal by me. Yeah, I've got him here on my card as well. Number 31, second baseman, Jacob Murphy. He's got a good eye as he takes ball one. Goodlettsville, Tennessee. That's about 10 minutes from Nashville. Hit hard back to the pitcher. Try and get the force at second. Over to first. Got him there as well. How about that double play? Pretty good stuff from South Carolina. And they're fired up defensively. Through two innings. Little web gem we got on our hands. Bryant to Noble to Zipri.
First replay of the morning. Home plate umpire David Wellington called the runner at first base safe. So Jacob Murphy on first base. Here was another look, Mike, at that double play. Well, bang, bang. You take a look at it. Foot hits bag. He is safe. Ball hasn't gotten in the glove yet. So we still got action <laughs> here in the bottom of the second. Cooper McCandless. Hitting now for Tennessee. You know, it's kind of tough on, uh, especially a younger player, because they get fired up. You know, a nice double play. Cooper Noble had a little bobble. That probably was the reason why the runner at first base, Jacob Murphy, was safe. But, you know, they're all fired up, high-fiving, getting it off the field, and then, you know, they get all the way in the dugout. It's like, all right, boys, let's get it back together again. So... Yeah, this is a tough part of uh, you know the game for these uh, these young players to you know get their focus right back to where it needs to be. Two and one to McCandless. No foul and back. McCandless got some great hands playing first base for Tennessee. Greg Bryant trying to get his team back to the dugout here. Two balls, two strikes. Still in the bottom of the second. Instant replay having an immediate effect here in Warner Robins. McKayla swinging at the high ball. And Bryant with the strikeout to make the second inning complete. Through two innings, 2 nothing, South Carolina. Set to begin inning number three here in Warner Robins. A quick review of our video replay rules applying only to Little League Regional and World Series games. Force outs, tags, miss spaces, and hit batters are the reviewable plays. Managers can have unlimited successful challenges, but if you have two unsuccessful in a row through six innings, you are done for the day. And this one chopped by Cooper Noble here who leads off the third for South Carolina. 
So, Mike, that is key. What exact plays are reviewable? You cannot review balls and strikes. Yeah, there's got to be some ways to keep the game flow going. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's one of the things that I think uh, the, in the spirit of way the rule was written, I, I believe there's a lot of big league managers that abuse it. Um, you know, there's, uh, it, it's supposed to be for the bang-bang play. And uh, big league managers, uh, and again, it's it's the rules. They can use it the way they, uh, you know, think that it's going to help their teams. But, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, I, I'm tired of watching umpires go off to the side and, you know, spending whatever minute, minute and a half, and then all of a sudden, you know, that happens again. And then, uh, you know, three times in an inning, you know, it, it, to me, you know, they, they've got to refine it just a little bit more. That brings up Gregory Bryant now. Bryant walked his last time up with a big swing. And, Mike, could you have imagined your playing career with instant replay in effect back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Well, I can think of one play what I'd like to have had uh, replayed. Uh, back in 92, Sid Bream from the Braves uh, slid in home plate. Uh, and the uh, umpire called him safe. I claim that he was out. Uh, video replay, I would have loved to have seen it. You know, made the Braves go back out on the field instead of celebrating. <laughs> they ended up going to the World Series, and we went home to watch. So for all of our fans here in Georgia, Sid was out. One and two <laughs> as this one hit foul. <laughs> You, you reminded Georgia coaches of that yesterday, as you do every year. <laughs> well, you know what? It just, uh, you know, it was, it was one of the greatest games ever played. Uh, you oh, know, according was. to, you know, ESPN, it's uh, well another punch out. Looks like Crosby's uh, got it going pretty good now. But uh, yeah, that uh, that that game has been showed, and there's a good fastball down away, great location. Just kind of locked him up, and Corbin Crosby, uh, you know, after the first, he's just really kind of settled in. Maybe it was a little bit of nerves. Couple strikeouts here in the third inning, and now Sifri up at bat for South Carolina, swing and a miss for strike one. And if you're Tennessee, I mean, this kind of really – Kind of gives you a good feeling. They're only down two nothing. Siffrey launches one to right. It carries a little bit over the head of the right fielder. And what is the call here? Let's see. They said it was a dead ball. Our first base umpire had called timeout. Gerald Johnson. Uh, There's, there seems to be some discussion in there. Uh, yeah, we just got some clarification. Uh, illegal pitch. Evidently, Corbin Crosby was not having his foot touching the rubber as he was delivering the ball. We saw that several times last week, Mike, at the softball regionals. Baseball, you don't have it nearly as much. But still, occasionally, players have to be reminded to touch that rubber as Siffrey draws the walk. In order to make that call, really, there's only two guys can make that call, first base umpire and third base umpire. Guy at second, guy behind the home plate really can't see that angle, so Gerald Johnson, the first base umpire, jumped right on it. Grabiak now the batter. He'll launch one into center field for a base hit. And a two-out rally here, first and second for South Carolina in the third. Yeah, nice line drive to center field. Ball got a little bit deeper. I'll tell you, South Carolina, it's important to just keep going after it. Don't be happy with the two-run lead. Lane Meyer struck out his last time up. Lane is one of the best hitters in this South Carolina lineup. Younger player that was moved up to play with the 12-year-olds because of his talent and his swing. 
Lane train. I like it. Another visit here for Joey Hale and Tennessee. I, I think I mentioned last year kind of in jest that Joey Hale has an appearance contract. <laughs> right now I've got him, uh, I'm, I've got him uh, for attention. Uh, he's got two trips to the mound, trip to the batter, and a trip to the opposing dugout to let them know that, you know, his, uh, his uh, batting order was in, in place. So we've got four appearances right now for Joey Hale, the head coach of Tennessee. He is going to get a lot of face time. Keep in mind, on the second visit to the mound in an inning, the pitcher must be removed. The offense is permitted one visit to a batter or runner per inning. Myers the batter here for South Carolina, trying to add to their lead. They'll watch this one outside. South Carolina with two runs in the first inning. Myers watches this one low. So all of a sudden, Crosby, again, struggling to, to find the zone here. Hargrove working overtime behind the plate. Yeah, just whenever it looked like he was settling in, and now he's kind of lost some rhythm. Bases are juiced here for South Carolina with two down. Southeast Regional in Warner Robins, Georgia. South Carolina and Tennessee here. First game of the day. Joel Irizarry grounded out his last time up. Good opportunity for him here. Not a lot of room behind home plate should the ball get past Hargrove. One thing to keep in mind, it's... All the fields are different. Some uh, have a lot more room behind home plate here. It's pretty pretty close, and the ball is a little lively. I've seen the ball in years past bounce pretty hard depending on what it hits. So it's not a given if it gets by the catcher that they can score. Two balls, one strike now. Hot Hargrove trying to... Settle down his pitcher. Fouled off two and two. That's a pitch that's been the most effective for Crosby. Is that tailing fastball down and away from right handers. Arizari watches the curveball. Strike three is the call. Crosby comes up with a big pitch. For Tennessee, still 2-0 two through two and a half here in Warner Robins.
The journey to the Little League World Series begins in T-Ball. Visit littleleague.org slash T-Ball to learn how to give the youngest Little Leaguers the opportunity to have fun and learn the game. Nathan Taylor, top of the order for Tennessee here in the bottom of the third. Tennessee still looking to get some runs on the board. South Carolina with a 2-0 lead. Taylor walked his last time up. Good eye that time. Just misses. David Wellington, home plate umpire, thought it was a little bit high. That one called a strike. And Nathan Taylor, kind of prototypical leadoff hitter. Likes to watch a lot of pitches, works the count. Good command of the strike zone. Runs well, left-handers. Slaps it to left, got a little bit of Juice in his bat can hit the ball in the alleys for extra bases also. Taylor, good eye that time and a good at bat. Second time he's been walked here this morning. That brings up Champ Nix. Nick gets a good swing on it, just foul. Tennessee player still running. Now just realizing it was a foul ball. <laughs> Hear fans saying replay, replay. That is not a reviewable call, though. Well, I can call that from here in the box. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is close, but uh, certainly not uh, close enough. <laughs> So one strike, the call to Champ Nix. Champ says his favorite athlete, Jake Fromm, quarterback of the Georgia Bulldogs. Favorite baseball player, Aaron Judge for the Yankees. Let's go right here. Favorite movie, you saw The Sandlot. Outside for a strike. What's your favorite baseball movie, Mike? Oh, it's hard to say. I. Uh... There's a few of them that kind of what I call pretenders, uh, not necessarily true to form, a little fictitious. Uh, Major League, one of those. Kind of entertaining, though. <laughs> kind of enjoyed the wild thing uh -huh. kind of deal. But uh, Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams, yeah. That, that, that right there is, to me, that's, uh, that's just a great story. Nick strikes out swinging. And that's the fifth strikeout today for Greg Bryant. Both pitchers really with just devastating strikeout pitches. Well, this one here, he got Nick's in the first at bat with a break ball down of the way. That one, the fastball up and in. So moving it around the strike zone, hitting all quadrants. That brings up Hargrove, who grounded out his last time up. Hud Hargrove is a competitor. His coaches call him a true dog. So hard working. Yeah, he's that guy that, you know, first one to practice, last one to leave. Guy that's leading drills, being a, a leader by example. And that's a, a lot of, uh, that's a trait that, yeah, as a catcher, you're kind of almost forced into that. You know, everybody knows how tough it is to catch, and when you're out there and taking foul tips and still leading the charge, you know, it just uh, goes to show that great leadership that Hutt has. He'll hit this to the second baseman, Aaron Lopez, taking care of it for South Carolina. Runner advances to second base, and there's two down. 
That's a smart play by Aaron Lopez. A lot of times you want to try to get that lead runner, but especially with one out, if it's going to be anywhere close, go ahead and get that second out at first base. You got a two-run lead. You know that's something you don't want. You want to stay away from the big inning and then just heads up by Aaron Lopez. Crosby's got the only base hit of the game for Tennessee. Here he is again, swinging at the first pitch and fouling it back. This will be the 50th pitch for Greg Bryant. Outside part of the plate, set him up. He'll foul this one off again. Crosby, I love when, when these young players, Mike, say that their favorite athlete is a guy who played well before their time. His favorite athlete of all time, the great Bo Jackson. You know, one of my former teammates, and played with Bo with the White Sox, and he had already had that devastating hip surgery. Hmm. But, I mean, he was still impressive. This ball hit hard, and it'll go into center field. Weidman comes up. He'll get it in for South Carolina. So first and third now as Crosby comes through again. He's two for two. Well, after the tough start early in the ball game, uh, Crosby on the mound giving up the two runs. He's certainly done his part offensively with a couple of base hits. So another visit out to the mound. This one, though, by Mike Noble out to check on his pitcher, Greg Bryant. So this is this is that time, Mike, where you start to, to make decisions here. Bottom of the third inning, if you are Coach Mike Noble, what are you thinking here in reference to the pitch count? Well, right now you've got to decide that, you know what, do you go to your bullpen? Do you go ahead and, you know, make the change, try to keep this Gregory Bryant uh, eligible to – Pitch in a couple days. It looks like we've got wholesale changes. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll introduce you to the new pitcher for South Carolina. Greg Bryant's work on the mound is done. Welcome back to Warner Robins, Georgia. And Bennett Candler comes into the game for South Carolina. This young man was on the bench, was not playing in the field, but called to duty here for South Carolina to try and get them back to the dugout here. Tennessee with two on here in the bottom of the third. They have a little lefty. Features fastball, big sweeping curveball and a changeup. His off-speed pitches set up the fastball, so we're liable to see a, a good mix of off-speed stuff, and then once he throws that fastball, it just adds a little bit more jump to it. Watson's story. And cheered on by the Tennessee fans who have made the trip to Warner Robins. Struck out his last time up. Tennessee looking for the big hit here. And we got a pinch runner also at first base for Tennessee. And I believe that's K1 Harris over there. It is. Harris, a tremendous athlete. This guy has got some, some quicks, Mike, on the base pass. Yeah, and he uh, 
you're allowed to have a couple of or two p special pinch runners. Doesn't affect the player you're pinch running for. He's able to go back out there with no change. There is a late addition to the Tennessee squad. This brings intangibles that team certainly needed. Get a look at some of the players for Virginia. Virginia looking for their first ever championship here at the Southeast Regional. Watson Story with two outs here in the bottom of the third. First pitch by Candler. Misses outside. Big pitch right there. Mike, if you look at the size between Candler, the pitcher, and the batter's story right now, if I was Candler, Oh, man, I would be so nervous. This kid is so much bigger than he is. Well, they, luckily that we've got a baseball game and not a basketball game going on. Because <laughs> this would be a mis mismatch. Ball fouled. But you see that sweeping left-handed action that, that Candler brings. That is really tough to time up, isn't it? Yeah, that's that big breaking ball. And one of the advantages whenever you don't throw that hard. The ball has a chance to spin more and actually break a little bit more because it doesn't have quite the velocity. The one, two to Story. Just barely gets a piece of that one. Center field for a base hit. Tennessee is on the board as Taylor crosses the plate. Watson Story comes through here in the third. And Bennett Candler looking to sneak a fastball by Watson Story. Had some poor swings on the breaking ball, but tries to bust him inside, and Story was having no part of that. Nice short stroke base hit. Big run for Tennessee. Now it's Kate Philpot. Good battle we've got going on here in the first game of this tournament. This game has been everything so far that we thought it would be. Candler trying to settle down, just needs one out to get South Carolina back to the dugout here. This is hit into center field for another base hit. Let's see if Harris tries to go home. He does. Play at the plate. And he's tacked out. Nolan Grabiak with the throw, reeled it in, got the tag on, and it stays a two-to-one game. South Carolina and Tennessee going at it. We have got a good one here. After three, it's two-to-one.
Welcome back to Warner Robins, Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. A uh, two to one score. See some of the future players there for South Carolina, Northwood Little League. Good job so far by both of these pitchers. Corbin Crosby of Tennessee. He's gotten into a few jams, had to work his way out of it. South Carolina, meanwhile, Greg Bryant no longer on the mound. Bennett Candler picking up for him. This game's going to be very strategical. We knew talking to these coaches yesterday. They have been here before. They know what buttons to push. And you just have to be here and experience this regional to see how the level of competition is here and how timing, Mike, making calls as a manager is everything. It really is. And yeah, you mentioned uh, both of these uh, head coaches, Joey Hale and Mike Noble, both have coached here before. Uh, they know what it's all about. They know that they're going to have to utilize their personnel the best way possible and be efficient with their pitching. Smouse hits it into right field for South Carolina. First pitch swinging. Brady, one of those players, always trying to refine his game, and he knew what to do with this one. Yeah, pitch down on the way, good piece of hitting. Just smashing that ball into right field. And one of the things you look at in your lineup, your seven, eight, nine guys, if they can get on base, just turns that lineup around a little bit quicker and gets your best one, two, three, four hitters up there a little bit sooner. Eli Headley, pinch hitting for South Carolina, takes one, a little bit low that time. Headley, the backup catcher, very aggressive at the plate. Now it's funny how Coach Noble yesterday was talking about how some of his players like to take pitches, see a lot of pitches. He prefers... <laughs> Them to swing at the first pitch, which is instruction you usually don't get from, from season managers. Well, you know, there's different rules of thought. And, you know, I always uh, find, uh, you know, uh, they contradict each other. You know, you want to see pitches, but if you look at counts where a pitcher starts 0-1, 0-2, the batting averages are horrible. So, hey, yeah, if you're ready for that first one and it's something you like, I say let her rip. Nice pitch that time by Crosby. One out here in the fourth. When you played, what type of guy were you? A little more selective? Because me, I'm always first at the buffet line. You know that. <laughs> I'm swinging. First thing I like to see, I cannot sit back and wait. Yeah, I was much more of a situational guy. Uh, you know, if it was a situation where pitcher on the mound had pretty good stuff, I knew I might have one good swing at it and if that was the first one that's the one I was going to swing at if it was a guy that I wasn't too worried about his stuff I might see a few of them so yeah I was that guy that just kind of just uh, adjusted as need be Weidman hits this one over the shortstop's head it falls in for a base hit and now with one out first and second for South Carolina you know, Weidman with his center fielder that made the great throw home to catch K1 Harris the inning before this one here I call that smart hitting you know everybody wants to hit the ball hard uh, you know what I want to hit it where nobody's playing Cooper, Cooper Noble's turn Noble's got a walk and a strikeout today Coach's son, returning player for South Carolina. We asked Mike Noble, has your son grown a lot from last season? He's gotten taller, he said. Well, not necessarily taller, but he has gotten thicker. And you can see he's got some definition this year. Yeah, and uh, you know, part of his problem is cutting his swing down. He's gotten more power than last year, but he's kind of 
fallen in love with the long ball and has a tendency to overswing. That one, that particular one right there, pretty tough pitch. Good job to foul that one off. Ball gets by. Runners will advance now second and third. Keep in mind there is a new catcher behind the plate. Jacob Murphy right now is catching for Tennessee, not Hargrove. Sometimes when you break up that pitcher-catcher relationship, Mike, it can have an effect. This one is in to left field. Another run for South Carolina. How about Noble coming through with a big two-out RBI base hit? Well, that's big on all kinds of fronts. That's number one, scoring after you've given up one. To me, it's really important. Having a shutdown inning, you, Tennessee, have have the score and scored a run. Now you've given that one right back, and that's where the leadership of Cooper Noble has come into effect. Good two-strike hit. Greg Bryant take a big swing. And one thing I got to give the coach is tremendous credit. When Mike Noble for South Carolina was talking about all of his players, you know how a lot of coaches naturally will talk about their sons like they can do no wrong. Not the case with these coaches. Very hesitant to bring up their own kids. I, I think that shows a lot of class talking about every other kid on the team. There's never ever any favoritism in baseball, is there, Mike? Well, <laughs> there, there is, and, and I had the opportunity to, to coach my son uh -huh. and for a year, and, and it's a very, very difficult thing to do mm. to try to keep, you know, treat everybody the same. And, you know, the tendency for a lot of coaches is to be a little harder on your own. You expect a little bit more out of them, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, a, you know, again, it's not fair enough sometimes to your own son, and, you know, something that's uh, – Again, my hat's off to these guys that, that, that can do it. Crosby misses inside. And Crosby now approaching 80 pitches for Tennessee. Nothing has come easy on the mound for him here this morning. Making him work for it more as he fouls that one to the left side. And Joey Hill did mention that Crosby was going to be in for all 85 if it need be. Shot down the left field line, but hooking foul. Gregory Bryant trying to single-handedly eliminate Corbin Crosby from this ball game, trying to get that pitch count up. He's at 80. 85 is your limit. Can't start another hitter once you hit that number. Right back to him. Tough play. Shortstop comes up, tries to get it to second. Safe there. Runner crosses the plate. Weidman makes it four to one. And this is a nice two-out rally put together by South Carolina. Well, the ball wasn't hit hard. It was going to score the runner anyway. Champ Nix choosing to go to second base. Would have been bang-bang there. Dai Dai Cotton not able to hold on. That's a tough, tough play for both the shortstop and the second baseman. Check that. There is officially one out here in this inning for South Carolina, but still. With one out now, looks like a new base runner is going to come in. Bryant doing a great job. I'll tell you what, these hitters for South Carolina, very selective. 
really executing right now. Jack Sedell checks into pinch run at first. Dawson Siffrey with a strikeout and a walk today. Check swing that time. And it's two balls, no strikes. Crosby takes a deep breath. Siffrey launches this one foul. And this, regardless of the outcome, this will be the last batter that Crosby faces. Mm -hmm. And starting to get hot here in Warner Robins. They call for a strike there. Great place to be this time of year, though. Softball regionals last week. Baseball regionals now this week. Missing outside. Bases will be loaded. As Siffrey draws his second walk of the day. And now Grabiak looks like he's going to stand in for South Carolina. And this could be it here for Corbin Crosby. Yeah, he's reached his 85 pitch maximum limit. Mm -hmm. So Crosby gets through nearly four innings. He'll head to the dugout and a new pitcher when we come back. Welcome back to Warner Robins, Georgia. Drew Felios with Mike Lavalier. And second pitcher of the game for Tennessee, Watson Story, the big right-hander to the mound. Yeah, Watson, a power guy. Got a good angle since he's so tall. Ball comes in, good downward motion. Throws hard, uh, upper 60s, may touch 70 with a curveball. And what's impressive about him is uh, for a guy this big, and for the power, he throws a lot of strikes. Grabiak looked like he wanted time and finally gets it <laughs> from home plate umpire David Wellington. <laughs> Let's just say that was a slow developing timeout. <laughs> Rabiak waves at the first pitch, fouls it back. Rabiak was red hot at the state tournament run for South Carolina. Just a pure hitter. That one with tons of velocity popping the mitt. Yeah, 
Oh, good stop that time by Murphy behind the plate. You know, Mike, you can see at the district and regional levels, a lot of these, or state levels rather, a lot of these pitchers just can be overpowering to hitters. But here, much different ball game in Warner Robins. And this one is going to get by. Runner will decide to go late. Throw is there, but a little bit late. And another run as Cooper Noble crosses the plate. Well, Noble was a little hesitant going to down the line once Jacob Murphy couldn't find it. Here you see he goes off the mask, loses it. And that's whenever Noble made the choice to go home a little bit too late. Again, as I was saying, though, you cannot just be overpowering here unless you're Alex Edmondson. You, you've really got to know how to pitch to get through onto the Little League World Series. All the fans from South Carolina certainly remember a few years ago, Alex Edmondson, big, tall right-hander, absolutely dominated the finals here, throwing a no-hitter. And I tell you, it was, it was devastating, uh, throwing in the upper 70s. I think he wow. hit 80 miles an hour once. And at 46 feet, it's, you know, it's well over 100 mile an hour oh. fastball if you're clocking it at the big league level. Bennett Candler, the batter. I think every run here, huge for South Carolina, because remember, no longer with their starter, Greg Bryant, in the game, on the mound, Candler... And committee going to try and do the work the rest of the way. Bases loaded. Story trying to get Tennessee out of this jam. And are we going to have another appearance here? I believe so. Yeah, this is just maybe Joey Hill trying to get his defense in order. You know, just giving the his players some situations. Hey, look, if this guy bunts here, this is your responsibility. Third baseman, this is what you've got to do. First baseman, you've got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also you know a chance to let Watson Story kind of catch his breath here and regroup, reboot. I think that's that's the you know this day and age, you go out and reboot. You don't regroup anymore. <laughs> that, that's back in my time. <laughs> Strike to Candler. Two and one now. Strike once more, two and two. Your coach Noble saying, make something happen, make it happen. Just give us a chance here. Gaylor hangs in. Coach Noble over there, seventh year coach in Little League. And he is owner and instructor of a place called the Strike Zone. Coaches, kids there, private lessons, lives and breathes this game. Candler swings and misses for strike three. And there's two away. Yeah, big out for Watson Story. You know, down by four runs. You know, definitely not an insurmountable number, but you, know, you want to kind of keep it within the four so that grand slam gives you a tie ball game. Once you get past four, you really have to put a big inning together. Hey, Rosari now the batter. And just see Story slowly starting to get on track for Tennessee. Touch 
And Story right now, he's touching 70 miles per hour plus, Mike. So that, it, by major league standards, that ball is coming at you quick. And 95 miles an hour plus. Oof. It equates to, so. This one is sent into right field, and it's going to go over the right fielder's head. Two runs are in for South Carolina, going for a third here. How about a two-out triple? Well, ball up and out over the plate. Irizarry got a good piece of that. No chance out in right field. And I tell you, that right there for South Carolina, you want to talk about a dagger. Two out bases clearing triple. Wow. So Irizarry with the biggest blow of the game so far. Tennessee trying to get the third out. And there it is, McCandless on the bag. It's eight to one through three and a half here in Warner Robins. The Little League Grow the Game grant initiative is distributed over $4 million to local Little League programs, providing funding, facility repairs and improvement, and to expand or establish softball, challenger division, and urban initiative programs. For more information, visit littleleague.org forward slash grow the game. Bottom of the fourth inning. And Day Day Cotton leading it off for Tennessee. Drew Felios with Mike Lavalier here. Southeast Regional. First game of this tournament. Everybody a little shocked right now. What is going on? How South Carolina has been able to dominate thus far. This is hit right into center field. So Cotton's trying to ignite this Tennessee lineup. That's a good way to start. And if you're Tennessee right now is the best thing you can do is not to panic. You know, not have to try to get all seven runs back this inning. But I think it's important that they do put in a crooked number up on the board. You know, score one, two. Try to get some of that momentum back in your favor. Pinch hitter now for Tennessee is Kaiser Harper coming off the bench. Kaiser watches one outside. Kaiser, very quiet kid, just does his job every single time, goes about his business, very business businesslike in the Tennessee dugout. Swings at that ball for a strike.
Bennett Candler's got very surprising speed. Ball's got good movement too, doesn't it? Well, that's uh, you know one of the things. The previous pitch is change up, kind of fading away. That one with the fastball, same kind of action came out of the hand really well, and get a little tail going down in the way. Perfect pitcher's pitch. Okay, Juan Harris's turn. Harris hits this one softly to the shortstop. Noble flips it to second. Try and get the double play, but Harris safe there. So they get one, and there's two away. Well, one of the things I want my shortstop to do is make all the routine plays. You know, it's nice to see the highlight film stuff, but, you know, that ground ball to shortstop, I want it to be uh, and out every single time. And that's one of the things that Cooper Noble, you know, kind of brings this team is that experience and that having that solid infield defense anchored by your shortstop. Very dependable over there. Tennessee's third time through the order now. Nathan Taylor at the top. That one misses high. South Carolina with six hits so far. Tennessee with five of them. And you got a seven run margin between both sides. Hit hard to the second baseman. Lopez there to make the grab. It was Sifri rather squeezing it for South Carolina. Through four, it's eight to one. All smiles on the South Carolina side right now. Eight to one the score over Tennessee. Drew Felios, Mike Lavonier, second pitcher on the mound for Tennessee. Watson Story, that guy. This is Headley pinch hitting here for South Carolina. Gets a bat on it, fouls it back. Yeah, and some interesting strategy that we may be seeing. We want Story to be eligible tomorrow. They'll have to get him out of here after uh, probably this hitter. They may choose to keep him in, but an 8-1 to one ball game, a lot of times score dictates what you're going to do. Mike Noble will also take a look at Bennett Candler, see if he needs him for tomorrow. They may look to make a move to save him. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you got to win the ball game. So that's uh, some of these things that our coaches have to deal with. And another reason why you're happy 
you're not coaching anymore, right? Mark? Yeah, that's a, there's a <laughs> lot of thinking going on, <laughs> and a lot of decisions, and uh, yeah, that's a that's a one thing that you know all of these coaches they're used to it. You know, back in my day, there was no such thing as a pitch count. Your pitch count was, you know, they took you out whenever the outfielders were out of breath because you were giving up bombs. (laughs) (laughs) Headley strikes out. Didn't like that pitch on the outside part of the plate. I mean, it's it's incredible. You think back into those days. Yeah, 70s, 80s growing up, 60s as well, and, and well before that. No pitch counts. It's incredible how the game has evolved. You know, but also when you're taking a look, yeah, and we'll see some changes. Uh, like I mentioned, they, they want story available for tomorrow. So they're going to go ahead and make a another change. And while he gets warmed up, we'll step aside from Warner Robbins, introduce you to our new pitcher. It's going to be Hutt Hargrove when we return. Hut Hargrove, the new pitcher for Tennessee. He'll be the third pitcher of the morning. Also, Story will head to third base. So, wholesale changes on defense for Tennessee. Right now, trailing by seven runs to South Carolina. And Hargrove's job right now, just shut the door. Do not allow any more damage. Well, he's a bulldog out there. You kind of expect it. He was the starting catcher, and anytime you put a catcher out on the mound, you usually uh, get a guy out there that's going to fight you. But he's a good fastball, middle upper 60s, and a curveball. Jack Sedell, pinch hitting for South Carolina. That is what makes Little League Baseball so much fun. One inning, you're catching. The next inning could be in right field. The next inning, you're you're on the pitcher's mound. And in about an hour after the game, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're playing wiffle ball. You're in the pool. Yep. Uh, that's one of the things that these guys are they're so resilient. Um, you you you'd kind of, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, you couldn't tell if these guys have played a game or not. They're... Uh, you know, a couple of uh, teams have stayed at our hotel, and you look out afterwards, and they're just having a blast. That's the way it should be. Yeah, a couple years ago, a team from Florida, just an absolute devastating defeat. All the parents are crushed. Heck, I was crushed just uh, up here. I was crushed for them. And later on, I mean, it wasn't 45 minutes later. Yeah, they're in the parking lot. They're playing football. They're all over the place. The parents are crying, you know, in their iced tea, but the kids are out there just having a blast. Full count now to Jack Zadell. Oh, fouled off the foot of Zadell that time. Jack 
Really got a great swing. This young man knows how to hit. Got a really good eye as well. Just finds ways to get on base for South Carolina. And he'll get on base here. Interesting that he chooses to run with the little pad on his foot. No, yeah, now he's going to choose to jog back to the dugout. Gavin Weidman going to run it first for Zadell. And now that brings up Cooper Noble one more time. Ball gets by the catcher. Wyden will advance the second. I think the big keys in this game so far, because we knew my talent would be great on both sides, South Carolina getting better quality at-bats, and the pitching matchup, South Carolina pitchers just done a little bit better finding the zone here today. Other than Irizarry, you know, pretty much it's been a singles game, uh, mm -hmm. been a small field kind of game. You know, nothing uh, attempting to leave the ballpark by any means but you know it's something that you know whenever you add them all up you know just South Carolina has just come up with bigger hits more timely at bat uh, I think the uh, getting up to nothing in the first inning was absolutely huge for them and big shot of confidence Cooper Noble had a big at bat last time up had the RBI base hit that one brushes him off the plate a bit. And it's one ball, two strike. One out here in the fifth inning. Coach's son, Cooper Noble, looking to add to the lead. Ball is in the dirt. Murphy blocking it. Tried to throw it down to Story, but sliding in safe is Weidman. Yeah, just outstanding. Base running by Gavin Weidman. Ball in the dirt. Great block by Murphy. But once Weidman saw that it get away from him a little bit, cruised into third base. Hit hard. Right field. Drifting back to make the catch is Harris. They'll tag up. And another run. Ninth of the game for South Carolina. Makes it 9-1. to one. Now you got to tip your cap to both Cooper Noble and Gavin Weidman. That was a manufactured run. Cooper getting a pitch they could hit to the outfield for the sack fly. Greg Bryant coming in now for South Carolina. What a day so far by this Northwood Little League team out of Taylor's South Carolina. Well, I'd like to take our open back, and you know, I had Tennessee as one of my pre-tournament favorites uh, just on the history. But uh, obviously... Uh, South Carolina took exception to it. I don't know if that is that bulletin board material. Are they going to be mad at me? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But uh, no, that's uh, South Carolina has just been extremely solid. Again, selective in every single at bat. Bryant with a walk and a strikeout today. Low and outside again, and ball four. Second walk of the day for Gregory Bryant. And now Dawson Siffrey here will come up with two outs. Keep in mind, this is something just to keep in mind. If South Carolina were to somehow get Siffrey to the plate, score two here, the 10 run rule would be in effect in the bottom half of this inning. Just something to keep in mind. 
After four innings, if team leads by 10 runs or more, that run would be in effect. Also, after three, 15 runs would put that rule in action. You know, by my count, that was the sixth walk given up by Tennessee, and that's you know something. Uh, you know, no no free free bases. Um, you know, you cut down your errors, you cut down on walks. You, know, you you make the plays in the field, and you know that levels the playing field field rather. And if you're walking guys, really tough on your defense. First and second for South Carolina. So another two out rally perhaps brewing here. You're right, Drew, if uh, Sifri should somehow come around to score, that would force Tennessee to score in their bottom half where this ball game would be over. Manager Joey Hale has gotten a lot more face time here today than I think he would prefer. Another pitching change on the way for Tennessee, trailing 9-1 to one here on the top of the fifth. Tennessee going through a lot of pitchers here in this opening game of the 2019 Little League Southeast Regional. Nathan Taylor now gets his turn. Yeah, Nathan started the ball game out in center field. A little left-hander, what we call a little crafty lefty. Fastball in the lower 60s, good curveball. Kind of goes about his business and being a center fielder, an outstanding athlete. So Taylor usually sparking with his bat. Now we'll have to do it on top of the hill. Watson Story moves to first base. Hargrove is now the third baseman. Grabiak now will swing it for South Carolina. Hit hard to the second baseman. Nice play made to get Tennessee out of the inning. 9-1 is the score going to the bottom of the fifth.
please come to the press box to play your wins. Thank you to all for your support of the win. South Carolina relying on the big hit so far against Tennessee. Yeah, it's been a mixed bag. Some singles. We get a ball in the dirt. Another base hit to left field. And Cooper Noble showing his experience. Here's your ball in the dirt. Off the catcher's mask, he couldn't find it. But South Carolina has put up nine in this one here. Base is clearing triple by Irizarry. Ball over the right fielder's head. Probably the biggest blow. They gave him a big bunch of insurance. Yeah, that by Irizarry was a triple three run scored for South Carolina. So definitely a shock. We knew South Carolina was good. Well, wow, they swung the bats here today just perfectly. See if Tennessee can get some back here. Big swing and a miss on a curveball by Candler. It's interesting, I ask all the teams how they consider their team strengths. And both of these teams were identical. Feel like they pitch well, they play good defense, and then their offense is the th number three. But uh, obviously South Carolina, you know, their pitching has been stellar. Good defense and our offense with nine big runs on the board, that's kind of taken top priority. Coach Noble calling pitches. Nick's trying to get on pace here for Tennessee. Two, three, and four. How about that pitch? Three and two, the count. The bottom of the fifth inning. Tennessee with a couple trips to bat here. Can still try to elude that loser's bracket. As Nick's aboard, Hut Hargrove now. We'll hit next. You know, one thing about all of these teams, it seemed like they all had something in common, Mike, as we were researching this tournament. The fact that just about every one of them had fought through some kind of adversity at the state level. They were all trailing at one time by four or five runs in critical games, and the kids simply stepped up. Yeah, it's uh, you know, character builders. That's what I call them. And you, know, you get down by some runs, you end up coming back and winning those games. You know, it just adds to the confidence knowing that, you know, you don't have to panic. A couple of these teams, uh, you know, Florida, for example, that have not lost yet. So it's something that, you know, have they been tested? Yes, they've been down, but, you know, they, uh, they've uh, been able to win. And some of these teams having to face defeat and face elimination, you know, made, made them a little bit tougher. Coach Noble out of the dugout. Quick discussion with his team. Yeah, I don't think it's ever good, really in any sport, if you go in to an environment like this or a tournament as competitive like this and you've just blown through everybody to get there. You always have to sort of have a point where you face some sort of adversity or setback. Makes you stronger. Hargrove with a good cut, fouls it back. And unless your team is just that good, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times you get kids that step up in certain situations and that just carries them on. You know, they get confident, and then before you know it, you got a kid that might have been a reserve, and now he's batting fourth for you. Hit hard to left field and a grab out there. Well, everything going right for South Carolina. Stretching out that time was Brady Smouse for the first out. Well, had him played perfectly. Outfield defense for South Carolina playing in fairly shallow. Brady Smouse doing a Superman impression, leaving his feet. Brady Smouse, look at his scouting report. Solid on defense. He showed us why right there. Easy force play by South Carolina. You see the intelligence by Noble at short that time. Gets the one out at second, just knows, you know what, that's all. I'm not even going to attempt to throw it to first. And a lot of times, I'm, 
is determined by how hard the ball's hit. Mm -hmm. And if you're the guy that's going to relay that double play ball, if it's a softly hit ball, unless it's me running, Drew, you might as well put it in your back pocket. <laughs> uh. This is going to be hit into right field. So a good job by Watson Story. Two out base hit, Story and Crosby now aboard for Tennessee. You know, Tennessee's offense hasn't been necessarily we call quiet. They do have five hits or six hits now. You know, so it's uh, not like they haven't had base runners. It's just they haven't been able to come up with some timely hits to where they string a few of them together. This is Ty Fry. Certainly one who's going to make the all-name team this year in Warner Robins. that time two balls favorite movie Jaws how about that pitch that's big time from Candler yeah nice big curveball going back to Jaws it's, it's a little easier being a fan of Jaws if you live in Tennessee oh you think yeah I was a kid in New England when that movie came out I didn't get I didn't go to the beach for months Shot through the hardest hit ball we've seen today. It's going to score a couple for Tennessee. So Tennessee not done just yet. Big base hit by Ty Fry scores two, and it's 9-3. Well, that ball, an absolute rocket into right center field, and Ty Fry uh, ended up uh, stumbling and uh, falling down. That's why he's still at first base, but... Watson Story motoring in from third. Crosby from second, easily scoring. Might be the longest single we see this week. Coach Hale, look at his lineup card here. And we're going to have another change. I believe Cotton is going to come into the game to pinch hit here. Dade Cotton watches one. And it's ball one. Tennessee trying to come from behind here. Keep in mind, they outscored their opponents at state 41 to 3. Total combined score. So trailing 9 to 3 here. Certainly not used to be in a situation like this. Cotton gets a good swing on it. It's drifting to left field, but it'll eventually die there where Smouse tracks it down. Tennessee able to get two off the RBI base hit from Ty Fry. It's nine to three headed to the sixth.
93 your score, South Carolina. Six runs better than Tennessee as we head to the sixth inning. Drew Felios with Mike Lavalier. Pretty nice day here at Warner Robins. 82 degrees right now. Lane Myers stepping up to bat for South Carolina, a team that has led for pretty much this entire game. And surprisingly, they have really played well against Tennessee. We knew how good South Carolina was, but they have really been impressive here this morning in the first game of the day. Lane Myers with a strikeout and a walk. Nathan Taylor working on the mound for Tennessee. Taylor, the fourth Tennessee pitcher that we have seen. Swing and a miss. Well, Nathan Taylor doing what he needs to do. Going out, trying to throw a zero up on their side and see if those two runs translate into real momentum and some kind of momentous comeback. Oakley now the hitter for South Carolina. It'll be his first at bat. Liam Oakley, sixth grader, watches one low. You know, Mike, what I was thinking, being pitch counts the way they are here in Little League Baseball, of course, it is huge to save pitching. It's also so critical, if you are a pitcher, to throw strikes. The, the biggest enemy, and it's multiplied here in Little League because the pitch counts are so tough. But you saw it as that's a base hit. Oakley gets it done for South Carolina. You saw with Corbin Crosby early. Struggling to find the zone, and when that happens, it can just make so many problems happen like dominoes. Yeah, it really does, and, you know, affects not only the game that you're playing, but the next games to where now you, you don't have this pitcher eligible or this pitcher here. You have to wait two days before you get them back. Or you maybe take a guy out maybe a little bit sooner because you know that you need him for the next game. Um, you know, these are, you said just perfectly, it's a domino effect. And what happens early in ball games, you know, certainly affects the rest of the tournament. Not only have to be good, you got to be efficient as well. This is a fair ball. And out at second. Oh, sliding in. You hear some of the players for South Carolina saying, review, review, review. I believe this one is going to go. Yeah, yeah to a they're going to look. Yeah, they're going to take a. Uh, they're going to take a look at this one. The call on the field uh, was a force out at second base. We can take some looks at it. There's the throw to third. Mm, pretty close. Uh, pretty close. Yeah, I think he got it right. Yeah. I think he got it right. Of course, I'm no better than 50%, even with <laughs> nine different angles in slow motion. <laughs> and remember, it's got to be conclusive evidence to overturn a call. Right. Can't just look closer. It's got to be completely obvious that he was, in fact, safe. So second base umpire, John Chapman. Out there thinking, all right, now, this is my first chance. I've had to make a close call. Yeah. I know all my family's watching. You know, umpires, you know, they, they get to realize, you know, there's a lot of pressure on these guys. And these are all volunteers. These guys donate their time. They pay their own way to get here. This is strictly voluntary on their basis. They, I tell you, they take a lot of pride in it. And I tell you, they are right a heck of a lot more than they are wrong. 
we have the ability to watch all these different angles. We have the ability to see, you know, in slow motion. And these guys have to call it. Boom, boom. And I believe they're going to call this a foul ball. Okay, well, I get the I get the entire the entire scenario was uh, different than I was expecting. Well, that ball rule foul. So all my discussion about the slide into second base and whether he was out or safe is a moot point. Mm -hmm. Hit right to the shortstop. Try and get the quick double play. Now good base running by Liam Oakley at first base. Whenever I'm coaching third base, is basically letting the runners know what you need to do. And oh, my last thing is freeze on a line drive. Especially whenever it's to left field, you're at first base because even if it goes through, more than likely you cannot take third base. It was Nix making the play short for Tennessee. Headley 0 for 2 today. Headley very aggressive at the plate. This is not a guy you're going to see taking a lot of pitches. That's what I mean. Play made, though, by Nix. It's short, and Tennessee gets out of the inning. South Carolina strands one, but all they need now is three outs to advance to the winner's bracket. Virginia play is waiting their turn. South Carolina and Tennessee into the final inning here in Warner Robins. Tennessee's got a lot of work to do. They need six here to just tie. Jacob Murphy will start things off for Tennessee. As Virginia will take on North Carolina. That game coming up next on ESPN Plus about, say, 45 minutes or so following this one.
Uh, Aaron Lopez, the new pitcher, control guy. Look for him to throw some off-speed stuff and fastball counts. He's got a good curveball change up. But a guy that's known to be able to pound the strike zone. Throws a lot of strikes. Lopez, third pitcher we've seen today from South Carolina. Murphy gets around on that one. Cooper Nobles played a solid shortstop all day long. His maturity, Mike, is so huge in the middle of that South Carolina infield. Now you look at him, you know, last year, 11-year-old. You know, great experience. There just shows a lot of poise. Waiting on the ball, knew he had time. He's got a good arm. Find some shortstops when that ball gets a little bit to their right. The tendency to panic and try to go too fast. K1 Harris, the batter now for Tennessee. Lopez working against the bottom part of this Tennessee order. Hit hard and fair. Second baseman, Joel Rosari, with a diving attempt at it. But ball took kind of a funny hop, and Tennessee's got a runner here in the sixth. K1 Harris is. Quick as he is, I gotta believe if Joel Irizarry even comes up with it, I don't think he has a chance to throw him out. That would have been one heck of a play if he could. This is Nathan Taylor. Now keep in mind, this is still a very potent and lethal Tennessee lineup. They can get some base runners here. Nothing out of the question. Lopez will throw from the windup. How do you like that move doing that, Mike? Any preference or just do what works in this situation? Yeah, it's individually here. To, in order to steal, the ball has to get past the hitter. So you won't see as many guys go to the automatic stretch like you would as they uh, get older and get on the bigger field. So this is really, you find a, a lot of guys just are more comfortable out of the stretch, keeps their mechanics a little tighter. When you're in the windup, there's more moving parts. Mm -hmm. More things that can go wrong. And oh, there's timing. Pinky. Pinky, 50-50 oh, yeah. raffle guy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, had to get that in there. No, 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 that's, uh, you know, saw him earlier today, and it's <laughs> like, wow, dude, that's, that's really pink. <laughs> now, Pinky has been involved in this tournament for a long time. He is, he is customary, working that 50-50 raffle. 50% of the proceeds go to the winner, the other 50 to each Little League program and the amenities that they use throughout the year. Great cause there. And now we've got two on. Taylor drawing the walk. So Tennessee's got something working here in the sixth. And Taylor's third walk of the ball game. As a leadoff guy, he's certainly done his job. Now it's a matter of whether they're boppers. Two, three, and four in the lineup. Go ahead and Get this thing uh, closer, if not close, tied up. Mike Noble comes out of the dugout here. Mentioned Coach Noble, so competitive. Been here before, Cooper Noble going through, and he's also got a, a younger five-year-old who's just starting T-ball, so <laughs> Coach Noble's going to be spending a lot of time Around Little League Baseball in the future. And what he was doing out there looked like demonstrating to, you know, just letting the guys know, you know, get an out here. You know, if we get a double play, that, that just gravy. But let's just make sure we get one out somewhere at any base. This isn't about getting the lead runner anymore. You know, right now with a six-run lead, 
on defense, all you're trying to do is register and out somewhere. If it happens to be right back to the pitcher and he throws it to first, yeah, you might have had better options, but I'll take that out every time. Champ nicks the batter. Couple strikeouts today. Barely able to put this in play. Play it first. Safe over there. And everybody's safe now with the bases loaded and Hot Hartgrove coming to the plate. Well, tough call right there between Lopez and Irizarry. Kind of an in-betweener. Irizarry thought that he was going to have to do it. By the time Lopez throws to first base, call at first was safe. Tennessee, they're knocking on the door. What an opportunity here for Hargrove. Interesting here. Lopez on the mound trying to close things out. Tennessee not going quietly here in the sixth. Bases are juiced. Hargrove will be the batter. Hutt has not had his most productive day at the plate. And there is his father. His father, really, really interesting to talk to. That's Neil Hargrove, an assistant coach for Tennessee, and also a former WWE wrestler. We had a blast talking to him yesterday, and we could have talked to him through the night. He was so much fun, just inspiration to be around. Went by the name Reno Riggins back for WrestleMania 9 and 10 and the WWE and WCW also. Hargrove laying off this one. And it's two balls, no strikes. Oh. And a good swing at that. Hut Hargrove got a good pitch to hit. That's one of those times whenever you're scuffling a little bit at the plate, you get your pitch and you miss it. It's almost like, wow. Oh, am I ever going to get another chance at a pitch like that? This is hit hard to center field. It's deep. It's back. It's off the wall. Couple runs score. Here comes the third. Tennessee is right back in the thick of this game. Well, he did get the pitch again, and he did not. Miss it, Hutt Hargrove. Gets a pitch, looked like middle, middle, drove this thing to center field. No chance at all for any play once the ball got past the cutoff guy. That was it. So, biggest shot of the game for Tennessee. And South Carolina is going to have to go with another pitching change here in the sixth. And it is going to be Cooper Noble, the shortstop. They wanted to save him, but they need him big now. His appearance when we come back.
So Cooper Noble, fourth pitcher of the game for South Carolina. Trying to stop the bleeding here. Lopez moves to second. Sifri is now the shortstop. How about how this game has swung, Mike, after South Carolina has had the edge the entire day? Well, and this is where you want your experienced guy that took the mound. And I thought they gave the ball to Cooper, and he cut on the mound. He didn't even take the full allotment of pitches. He was ready to go, looked very, very confident. And that's where experience comes from. Crosby the batter. Cut Hargrove delivering a three RBI double to get Tennessee right back into the game. And now Crosby. Crosby would come around. He would pull Tennessee to within one. This could easily be a championship matchup here in this Southeast Regional. Two teams that just refuse to give an inch here. Coaches liked it. Fans liked it. Home plate umpire David Wellington did not. Yeah, David uh, Wellington he really had a pretty uh, pretty tight zone. You know, you have to call him maybe a hitter's umpire, but very, very consistent. Big swing to miss there, and that is a huge out for Noble in South Carolina. Yeah, went with some off-speed stuff earlier in the count, and that just a good old high, hard fastball right by Crosby. Can't catch up to it. You see Cooper on the mound with a little fist pump. He knew how big that, that out was. Watson Story. Story, the final hope here for Tennessee. Hargrove is on second. Cade Philpott will hit next if Tennessee can get to him. Well, a little different look. Cooper Noble going with the, uh, he, we'll call it the hesitation pitch. Uh, stayed up in his delivery for quite some time and finally delivered the ball. It's uh, really different. One ball, two strikes now. Going for that punch out pitch. Trying to get South Carolina into the winner's bracket. Two balls, two strikes. Noble comes outside with it. And call that an illegal pitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get a little talking to Coach Noble quickly out of the dugout here. We want some clarification. You've seen Cooper Noble hesitate, then he's gone right from the kind of his stretch without actually stopping and then going right ahead. So different interpretation on a legal versus illegal pitch by David Wellington. I think it's a move point. The pitch was a ball anyway. But this could determine, you know, we'll take a, uh, a look at uh, this. And here, most of the time you stop. Here he just puts his hand in the glove and just goes. Home plate umpire, you know, it looks weird. A lot of times when things look weird, that's whenever you get calls. Yeah, they're talking about the quick pitch. There's no quick pitch for that. 
There was that wording. There's no, there's no problem. There was, in the rule book, on rule two, there is a definition of quick pitch. Okay? It's not hard judgment, it's whether it's quick pitch. Now, if he says play ball, he's granted that the batter's had time to get ready so he can do what he wants. Okay. Not hard judgment, but it's quick pitch. So Mike Noble pleading his case for South Carolina and home plate umpire. You know, some technicalities here of what constitutes the a, a, a legal pitch versus an illegal pitch. Mike Noble saying once the umpire calls time in, you can kind of do whatever you want. I think that's been rebuked. Nonetheless, three balls, two strikes. Cooper Noble trying to eliminate Tennessee here, at least for the day. Hit hard to center field. This one is deep. It has got a chance. It one hops the wall. Tennessee's still alive. Watson Story coming through with an RBI double. Well, <laughs> didn't think a few innings ago we'd be able to say this, but the tying run has come to home plate. Three and two break a ball. Absolutely hammered by Story. One hop in the fence. So we're going to have a pinch hitter here. And Ty Fry, who has had a hot bat today for Tennessee, is going to get called to duty here. Yeah, the guy with the wooden bat. Looks like he's gone to the more conventional metal bat. Yeah, before this inning, he had had the biggest hit of the day for Tennessee. Can he do it again? Cooper Noble still trying to finish things off here. Delivers a strike. Just have a feeling we're going to see this matchup again, Mike, throughout the week. I don't think early on that was the prototypical Tennessee team that we saw. A little bit jittery. Surprising that they were that way. Such a such a championship program, Goodlettsville Little League is. Ball delivered outside by Noble, and now three balls, one strike. We've seen, though, throughout the course of this game, what Tennessee is capable of. You see Ty Fry, or Ty Fry looking at third base coach, see if he's got the green light. Yes, he did. Okay, anytime I've got a guy that with one swing of the back can tie the ball game, he will not get the take sign. Big pitch coming up here. Noble does not want to face the go-ahead runner at the plate. A little high. Tennessee keeps the rally going. So right now, Mike, if you are South Carolina, is that little bit of doubt starting to creep in here whether you can finish this game off? <laughs> well, uh, beginning of the inning, no. Uh, now, right, you've got to think. Now, uh, one swing in the bat, and you lose the ball game. I mean, you've got the makings of a walk-off right here. Of course, you've got young man that we were looking at, Cooper Noble. There's Dad. I'd have to say Dad's more nervous than Cooper right now. Day Day Cotton, pinch hitter for Tennessee. So likely not going to be a home run. He's not known for his home run power, but he can certainly make great contact, and he is a terror on the base pass. Also keep in mind, every single player in this tournament can hit. 
they're here for a reason. These are the best of the best from their respective little leagues. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, all your reserves are normally batting number three and number four on all of their other teams. So all the way through the lineup, one through 13, they all swing it. Cotton has a base hit earlier today. So Coach Hale pushing all the right buttons here, making sure his hottest bats are in place here in the clutch moments. A strike. Oh, wow. Well, good fastball tailing in on Cotton's hands. One, two to Cotton. We'll get away with that breaking ball. That curve ball ideally needs to be down out of the strike zone. One and two count. That one kind of left out over the plate about thigh high. He's lucky to get away with it. Just high. Cotton laid off it. First of four games today. And this one has been a battle. South Carolina trying to hang on against Tennessee. Cooper Noble, fourth pitcher of the day for South Carolina. Cotton swinging, and that'll do it. Cooper Noble. And South Carolina able to squeak by Tennessee. It did not come easy. Tennessee swinging a mean bat late. Well, Tennessee, uh, again, with a big finish. They were down, had a big hole, 9-3 to three going into the last inning. And they end up scoring four. So they may have some momentum going into the loser's bracket. They came up with 11 hits. You know, but South Carolina, they had the time they were hitting. Eight base hits for them, nine runs. And, you know, till the end, they were fully in charge. But, uh, you know, hats off to both of these teams. And Tennessee, uh, I think they're going to make some noise before this is all over. Great performance by both teams. South Carolina staying in the winner's bracket. Much more baseball to come here throughout the day. Three more games on ESPN+. Plus. For Mike Lavalier and our fabulous crew, I'm Drew Felios. 1.35 start time for our next matchup. We'll see you then.